In this video, I'll explain how to set up and configure software settings for your ATI FANUC Ready Force Torque Sensor. Let's start with the initial connection. First, check that the sensor is powered on, connected to the robot controller, and the sensor status LED is green. Then turn on the robot. On the Teach Pendant, navigate to the Menu, Setup, and Port Initiation settings. The available connectors to configure will differ slightly depending on the controller model. Configure your controller's communication ports as described in the FANUC Force Control Manual by specifying a force sensor as the desired communication type. To do so, click F3 for detail, F4 for choice, and force sensor. Once complete, power cycle the robot to initialize the changes. Back on the Teach Pendant, navigate to Menu, Next, Status, Force Sensor. You should see that the force and torque values are here. Press on the sensor and see the readings respond. This screen is the easiest way to check if the sensor is communicating with the robot. Note that all ATI force torque sensors will have a warm-up period where the sensor readings will drift. This is expected. When the sensor comes to a steady state temperature, the readings will stop drifting. It is normal for the unloaded force and torque readings to be non-zero. The robot will tear the readings before completing a force control move. If all of the values are a static zero, communication has not been established between the sensor and the robot. There may be an FS sensor cable is cut error, but this is the expected error to display in most communication related error conditions. Try power cycling the sensor by disconnecting the sensor cable, then turn off the robot controller, then reconnect the sensor cable. Once the green status LED is illuminated, turn the robot controller back on. If the values are all a static very high number, the scaling factors may not be being read off of the sensor properly. If you see this behavior, or if the values remain all zero after several power cycle attempts, confirm that your sensor is indeed a FANUC ready ATI sensor. Refer to troubleshooting documentation or contact ATI support. On the status force sensor current values screen, we have the values in the current column, which are expected to fluctuate slightly, and in the mean column, which have an averaging filter applied. Some features of FANUX force control software only apply to the FANUX sensor. These sensors have no effect on the ATI FD sensor. Notice that the temperature field here is zero. That's expected. Pressing clear also has no effect. The F-Log screen is used to log FT data from the force control tasks run by a robot program. There will be no existing logs upon initial install. The FANUC force control manual explains how to use this feature. Press previous to get back to the current FT value screen. The execution history screen displays detailed results of past force control tasks. This list will be blank on initial install. The FANUC force control manual also explains how to use this feature. Press F4 for a current value to get back to the current values FT screen. If you have valid force torque data displaying on this screen, you can continue to the next step, which is configuring the force sensor attachment type. To configure your force sensor attachment type, start by navigating to Menu, Utilities, and Force Sensor. Select the force sensor attachment utility and open it by pressing Enter or F3 for detail. Select the sensor attachment type. The hand sensor selection means the sensor is mounted to the robot wrist, typically directly to the flange with an interface plate. The fixed option means the sensor is mounted external to the robot, such as on a table or immobile fixture. I will show you the hand attachment type. Press F5 for hand, then F2 for set. To confirm that you want to set the attachment type, press F4 for yes. This screen shows the current sensor frame, this is where the robot currently thinks the sensor's measurement coordinate frame is located. Because we selected hand attachment type, the sensor frame will be relative to the mechanical interface frame base, which is the robot wrist flange. The sensor's native measurement coordinate origin is the center of the tooling side face, or tap, of the sensor. The sensor's measurement coordinate axes are labeled on the sensor, and the sensor should have been mounted to align these with the robot's default tool axes. 
the robot's sensor frame definition thus needs to be the location of the sensor's measurement coordinate origin with respect to the robot's wrist. This is usually just a Z offset of the height of the interface plate plus sensor. There is no rotational component when the sensor's axes are aligned with the robot's default tool axes. With ATI FANUC ready kits, the sensor frame is pre-programmed onto the sensor to match the interface plate it was sold with. The sensor frame values will automatically be populated into the sensor frame definition here. You can also press F3 for default to reread the pre-programmed values off of the sensor. If you are using the ATI FANUC ready kit and the pre-programmed sensor frame values, go ahead and press F3 for default, then F4 for yes, then F4 for yes again. Now power cycle the robot controller. Note that if you navigate back to the menu, utilities, Ford sensor, and the force sensor attachment screen again, you can confirm the current sensor frame just by checking the sensor frame section of this screen. You can disregard whatever is listed in the parameter for settings section as it is only ever used for the non-default interface plates and will just list the last used values, even if you previously selected to use and are currently operating with the default frame. On the status force sensor current value screen, we will only ever see raw sensor data. This screen does not display the data with any frame transformations or any other post-processing applied. This is why it is easier if the sensor axes align with the robot's default wrist axes. Now we'll take a look at the other force sensor utility screens. From the menu, utilities, force sensor screen, we have a few utilities that we use when programming force control tasks or schedules. The FANUC force control manual explains how to use these features. The first one listed, workpiece mass measurement, allows you to weigh parts during a program using the sensor data. To enable the FANUC force control gravity compensation feature, we first have to determine our tooling's mass properties using the utility for tool weight and center of gravity calculation. The tool weight and center of gravity calculation utility guides you to position the robot in three different orientations to determine the tooling mass properties. Click record to save these positions. Once these positions have been recorded, click previous to go back to the previous screen. Executing these top positions allows the robot to calculate the tool weight and center of gravity. After the tool weight and center of gravity measurements have been taken, you can enable gravity compensation during force control schedules. This allows the robot to tell the difference between forces caused by its own acceleration and those caused by actual external process forces. To do so, click the Set Gravity Compensation Switch option, then F3 for detail. Here, you can turn on gravity compensation for the desired force control schedules. Finally, the TP Program Auto Generation utility records position data while tracing a path using the contouring force control function. Refer to the FANUC force control manual for more information about this utility. Now we'll take a look at some force sensor utility screens that we are not using today. Some setups only apply to the FANUC brand force sensor. Some features of FANUC force control software are paid add-ons, so you may not have access to them even if they work with an ATI sensor. From the menu utilities force sensor screen, we see that deburring path auto generation is an add-on option that this robot does not have. The FANUC force control manual explains how to use this feature. Force sensor diagnosis results only works with FANUC force sensors. We will only see zeros here. This is expected for an ATI sensor. 4D graphic is another option that I do not have. The force sensor installation guide is intended to help you walk through the process of installing a FANUC brand force sensor and does not apply to ATI sensors. It is okay to leave these fields as not done. For additional guidance on setting up or using your ATI FANUC-ready force work sensor or configuring the software, contact ATI for support.